Mr. Burney, members of the board, we do have, I'll say, one item for board discussion. Uh, lots of subtopics under that one item, uh, board policies, and at this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Martin. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I want to share some policies with you this evening. Um, you know, Fairfield is always setting records in one way or a, another, and I think this could be a, a record 18 policies to um, go over this evening. So anyone who doesn't want to set through 18 policies, you're welcome to. Yeah, you're more than welcome to leave now. You don't have to <laughs> This would be an stand awful sit around. time. Uh, unless you want to hear these, I found them very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for coming. Congratulations. Yes, welcome aboard. All right, the first of 18 is policy ABB and its staff involvement and decision making. And before I present these, I will mention to you that uh, these policies are all bringing us in alignment with the Ohio School Boards Association, which is our policy developer. And uh, our attorney, John Clemens, has looked over these as well as Mr. Smith and Mrs. Lane and others. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Policy ABB, staff involvement and decision making. There's really no major change there, just some updating of um, language. The legal reference has been added and cross references and contract references have been added. Any questions about ABB? Policy BCA is board organizational meeting. Once again, the language is updated and it's been formatted into our policy format. Uh, the major changes is that the board now appoints the, well, appoints the president pro tempore from its membership. Um, and then when the meeting actually happens, the president pro tempore calls the meeting to order. And then that person presides over the election of the president. The policy used to say the president and the vice president, but that's changed. As soon as he is elected and sworn in, he or she, uh, then the newly elected president assumes the chair. Um, and then as far as the annual business meeting, there are, were some changes. We uh, are deleting some information about the treasurer and adding a couple other items that are involved in that meeting as well. Uh, the legal references and cross references are updated. Any questions about that one? No. Policy BD is about school board meetings. <clears throat> This talks about the organizational meeting, that at that time, uh, the board will fix the time to hold its regular meetings, which we do already, but it's now in print in a little different way. Uh, it also says that we have to meet at least once every two months. We always meet more frequently than that. Uh, also in here, it talks about uh, open meetings policies. In the past, the policy just said that the board was involved in being an open meeting. But we've added the language that any board appointed committee is also um, is also working with the Open Meetings Act or the Sunshine Law. So that's more clearly spelled out for us. Uh, references have been updated as well. Please just stop me if you have any questions about any of these. Well, if I could, right there. So that would mean our business advisory board would would serve under those rules as well. If someone wanted to come to a meeting, sure. Yeah. It's an open meeting that the public may attend. Yes, has to. We have to give notice. We have to take minutes. Yes, okay. and anybody can attend. Uh, BDDA is the notification of board meetings. Um, talks about due notice for board meetings, and once again, we've added the verbiage and board appointed committees. Um, but it's narrowed really who we give notice to. It's now the public who have requested notification. So it's not our responsibility necessarily to notify all the public, but anyone who has requested, that includes, of course, newspapers, publications, and others who request that information. Uh, it's added some language about special meetings. Uh, we have to give the time, the place, and the purpose of those. That's been added. Uh, we've added a section on emergency meetings um, and how we notify the media immediately about any emergency meetings and also added language about the cancellation of a meeting and what we do when a meeting is canceled uh, and references have been updated. The next policy is BDDB, the agenda format. Um, 
it says that the format is developed by the superintendent and the board a as a whole. In the past, it just said the board president, but the language has changed to the board as a whole. Of course, the board president can be the representative of the board in, in doing that. Um, talks about distributing the tentative agenda at least 48 hours prior to the board meetings. Uh, the fact that an agenda, once it's adopted, requires a vote of majority of the board present to um, make any additional modifications to it. And then there's a whole section we put in there on the con consent agendas. We don't typically use consent agendas in our meetings, but if we ever did, we would go by, by these rules. Uh, the cross-reference has been updated as well. I do have a question about that. Okay. When does our agenda become official? Um, well, it could be the 48 hours before. It's the tentative agenda, and unless there's a change, then you're notified of, of the change. Because it says the, the agenda is adopted. It's adopted 48 hours beforehand. It's, it's automatically adopted, or the board has to, is the board now supposed to ad, approve the agenda? I, I don't really know the answer to that. Uh, we can check it out. I don't know if legal counsel would have any advice yeah, I mean, about it, that. Formally speaking, it's your tentative agenda becomes the agenda when you enter into the meeting. So you, the requirements are that you post a tentative agenda, but it is not finalized until the meeting begins. Okay. And it doesn't take a direct vote at that time right. then. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Policy B, DDC, Agenda Preparation and Dissemination. It shares some of the same information we just talked about. Uh, the superintendent, in consultation with the board president, arranges the order of the items of the agenda, uh, just in an effort to make sure that the meeting moves as expeditiously as possible. And uh, the board will follow that, except it may vote to rearrange. Uh, perhaps there's someone who's going to speak that needs to leave early or something, so you have the power in the meeting to rearrange that uh, if, if you so choose to do so. The cross-reference has been added to that one as well. Policy BDDF is the voting method. Uh, just a few small uh, wording updates. The main thing that was added is that uh, this is called voting method, so all the votes that require a specific majority are in an exhibit that is already in existence. I will say that there's one item on the uh, exhibit that we are going to update, which we'll do probably at the next meeting but that's already in, in board policy. Uh, legal references and cross-references have been updated for that. Policy BDDH um, also talks about that all meetings are open to the public. Once again, it gets in there that the board appointed committees are also open to the public. Um, this is something that we've been confronted with recently, but. Uh, each person addressing the board shall give his or her name. That's what it has said in the past, but we've uh, permissive languages in there that the board president has the right to waive that if he or she so chooses. Um, and then the period of public participation may be extended uh, by a vote of the majority of the board present. May I uh, make just one suggestion, and if the board wants to weigh in on this, I don't know. And I know that OSBA kind of gives you the language, but should it be the presiding officer? Because if the board president is not here, oh, mm -hmm. and the vice president's running the meeting. That, that makes perfectly good sense to me. So I can switch that for our, when we vote on it next time to presiding officer. Is that the will of the board? Is that okay with you, Brian? Sure. Or Jerry? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think that improves it. Um, and then it, it just puts in writing that we will have a special section in our board agenda, uh, a short paragraph outlining the board's policy on public participation, which we already do, but it's now in writing that we provide that. And a cross-reference has been updated. Uh, policy GBB is the same as policy ABB that I've already uh, discussed with you. 
policy IIA talks about instructional materials and it's just changed the verbiage a little bit. Uh, it, the board used to delegate that to just per, uh, professional personnel. Now it lists who those professional personnel are, their administrative and teaching staff. And it also clarifies language that these people do not automatically uh, choose or select the materials, but that they recommend the materials. Um, most of those instructional materials are brought to the board for uh, actual, um, to actually adopt them. Uh, also, it expands what all is looked at. Uh, it includes now computer software, internet access sites, and we always said recordings, but it's expanded to say video and audio recordings. And then there's a large paragraph added to the end of this, which just spells out that parents are provided opportunity to review the selection of textbooks, reading lists, et cetera, and that um, they can take a look at any of the curriculum that we're providing for our students and give their input to them. Um, but it mentions that instructional material does not include academic tests or academic assessments, which parents uh, don't get to preview. Uh, legal references and cross-references are updated on that one. Uh, the next one is, uh, the next several actually are all tied in together. And our curriculum department has worked on this as well as Mr. Walterman and Mr. Clemens uh, to try to get this um, in good shape. It's our acceleration policy, policy IKEB. And OSBA has provided us with two sample acceleration policies. One is a shorter version and one's a more extended version. We adopted uh, several years ago the smaller version, but state law requires us to actually adopt ODE's policy. So the second longer version of the policy is the Ohio Department of Education's policy. And so we're adopting that in its um, in its full fullness there. Um, the acceleration policy just says that there are students who are entitled to an ed education commensurate with their particular needs. Some need an accelerated curriculum or placement in order to meet their needs. And so this policy describes the process that's used for evaluating students for possible acceleration. And there are several types of acceleration that this covers. Uh, it, covers early admission to kindergarten or first grade, uh, acceleration in one or more individual subject areas, promotion to a higher grade than their same age peers, and uh, early graduation from high school. So those are the four types of acceleration that it can be involved. So there's a lot of language there talking about how a student is referred, how they're evaluated. Um, and there's a distinction between um, students who are entering kindergarten or first grade early, the early entrance, if the students would be the proper age by January 1st of the school year that they are granted early entrance, then they're evaluated in one way, uh, and we get to choose that way, which is another um, policy that we'll be talking about. If they're not going to be proper age for kindergarten or first grade before January 1st, then the state gives very clear tests that have to be used. It's very uh, prescriptive of how we have to do that. So we can come up with our own for part of the students, but if they're really young, uh, then the state tells us exactly which instrument we use to evaluate them. So that's put in there. Uh, the composition of the Acceleration Evaluation Committee, uh, the responsibilities of that committee are spelled out. Um, then the cross-references are, are updated. That's the first part of that. Uh, let me share that because it goes along with several um, regulations. Uh, we also have then regulation IKEB-R. And in this policy IKEB, it says that the superintendent will make sure how we are going to accelerate students in kindergarten and first grade that they come up with the way to do that and IKEB-R is that method we'll be using for um, 
accelerating kindergarten or first grade students whose birthdays are after August 1st, but before De or on or before December 31st. So that's our own method for identifying those students. Then we had a policy, JEBA, and it's really an abbreviated policy that's the same as IKEB, but because when parents look at our policies, they could look under our I policies, which stand for instructional policies, or they could look under the J policies, which are student policies. We put a similar uh, policy in both places to just help them be able to find it. But this policy is an abbreviated form and just refers them to the, the link to your policy so that they can get the information that they need. And then the final one in this group of policies is JEBA-R, which was our old policy, talking about early entrance to kindergarten. Um, and since we've revamped that with the new IKEB-R, this one is just going to be removed from our policy book. That's a lot of information. Um, are there questions? I just noticed a couple of just housekeeping items. Okay. Um, and other policies we've, when there's been a small number like five, six, right. we've also had the number in parentheses. Yes. And there's, yes. they talk about five or six years of age uh, on JBA. Oh, I see. Bottom paragraph. I see that. Mm -hmm. And then I don't, and also we've also in the past have done, we talk about days if we want, we talked about calendar days or school days when it's related to discipline. I don't know if we want to also have that we're talking about a response back from a parent, how many days they have to respond back to a decision. I don't know if you want to have okay. calendar days on there or. Was that IKEB? Uh, it was the first one. It was the IKEBS. Yeah, and it was 45 uh, days, I think. It was on page, it was item five. Okay. Yes, we have tried to do that and thank you for. And then item six talks about 30 days of receiving the appeal. Okay. And those are calendar days, by the way, but it would be good to spell those out. So, thank you. I'll add those. Um, Roger, there is one more on uh, page six of IKEB. Okay. Under accelerated placement, letter 30 days. B, 30 days, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And page three, item five, that's the 45 days. Did you mention that? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, I caught that one. Thank you. Thank you very much. That helps us be consistent in our policies. Any other questions or concerns about those? All right. Uh, KD, policy KD, we've already gone over that. It's listed under BDDH as well. Uh, policy KL is public complaints. Uh, Mr. Martin. Yes. Uh, again, that's on there. It says about waived by the board presidents. If you want to put Yes. It. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Just making my note there. All right. KL public complaints. Uh, this is basically just some updated wording. There is nothing um, really strong about that. The legal references have been updated. Um, so that's just an update to make it compliant with OSBA. KLD, I, I will say that on both, uh, both of these, KL and KLD, they've talked about school personnel and OSBA has changed that to district personnel. Um, the one thing that was added here uh, by the opinion of our school council um, and it's also, I've seen it in other places that says that we really, we cannot disregard anonymous complaints, uh, which we don't, but in policy here, some of the wording that we've added is anonymous complaints are disregarded unless other corroborating evidence is known or presented. So if we have evidence uh, then or other thoughts about something that is, is wrong, then we do do full uh, investigations of those. Um, and it just clarifies that 
people at some point can uh, request an audience with the board in executive session, but uh, there is no board action taken uh, in a matter that is discussed in the executive session that any action is taken in public session. And then all three of the references have been updated. I do have a question about that one. Do you have a question, Mr. Schwinn? <laughs> uh, it's just a typo. I'll um, give this to you for okay. IKEB-R. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. The question I have is um, yes, thank you. a person uh, may request an audience with the board in executive session. Is it policy that the board must grant that? It's at the board's discretion. At the board's they discretion. They may request, it's just what we put in policies is that they may request it. Okay. So. Thank you. And the board is permitted to allow them to come, but it's at their discretion. Okay. And then KLD-R, uh, the regulation, uh, updates the language in the same, the same manner. School is now district personnel. Uh, and there is one part of a sentence that's been crossed out. Uh, it talks about the appropriate form. All we ask is that uh, if, the, if someone has a complaint, that they put it in writing. There's not a specific form. We've tried to make it easy for people just to put in writing what their complaints are. There's not a specific form available. Okay. Those are the 18 policies. Thanks for your input on those. Have a question. It was, I meant to send this to you um, earlier when I read the policy. This is in regards to policy KD. Um, this is about the public participation at board meetings. Okay. Through the document, um, and this is how it's been before, so it's not anything that's um, really changed. I'm just wondering about the inclusion of uh, the district public. Because I think <clears throat> it's been an understanding that we're looking for citizens of the district. It's not spelled out. However, I, I would believe that perhaps that is something we could look at um, just including. I could be wrong, but I, I think that's something that's been like an accepted understanding but it's not spelled out in the policy. And I wonder if that could be something that was spelled out, or is that against the um, spirit and letter of public sessions? That's, that's a, a good question. I know that we have had people not of our district who have come in and addressed us at, at times. Um, I, I don't know the legality of that, uh, Mr. Walterman, do you have yeah, any input I, I on would, that? I would think that that's not a permissible restriction that you want to include. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know definitively that you have to allow non-district. I think that's, I, I was having trouble hearing with you, Belina, but I think you're talking about people who are not residents in the district. Mm -hmm. And I think that the board meetings, generally speaking, throughout the country are open under the Sunshine Law and Public Meetings Law. Um, that type of restriction is not appropriate. I'm sorry, the question, if I may, was that can we restrict public participation? Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. So can we restrict public participation to, they want to address the board right. to yeah, I, district I, personnel I, my, or I district? Think that, no, you cannot. Cannot. I, I don't believe that you can. Okay. I can back you on that and review that with um, Roger, but I think that the requirements of the require that they be that participation component be required for any person attending. Now, I have seen that in other districts here locally. Uh, That's why I asked the question. Yeah. I, it, it, there may be some ability to do that, but I don't believe so, to be perfectly honest with you. I know that um, Madison School District is in a legal struggle with that as well, their, their public participation. And I don't know what the details are of that, but I do know that there's been some struggle there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we, we can check on that. I'll talk with Mr. Walterman before we put it on for board approval and let you know what the decision is on that prior to uh, you voting on it so that you'll be aware whichever way that, that goes. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Okay. 
appreciate your feedback on all of these. That concludes my items. Thank you, Mr. Martin. I'm trying to find where we are here. Okay.